So I was talking to an Aquarius woman who's in a relationship with an Aquarius woman. I've been in this situation before and I didn't like it. <laughs> but I didn't like anybody, so <laughs> I guess join the club, right? So she told me that she feels like her Aquarius has extremely high to impossible standards. Now we've talked about this on the show before. And she asked me if I would talk a little bit about Aquarius and our high standards because she feels like it's an issue in this relationship. So I'm going to do the introduction and then I'm going to tell you all about what she had to say. Hello, I am Queen Osset Haru and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please pass it on to anybody else who might like it too. And please drop us a positive comment in the comment section. And if you have time, stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to read two positive comments from previous videos and one of them might even be yours. If you would like to get a reading done, ooh, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. <laughs> the tripod is right near my ankle. If you would like to get a reading done, please uh, send me a message through email or on social media. And uh, let's see, what else? If you want to check out um, uh, my Patreon, that is underneath this video. Everything is underneath this video. My social media, Patreon, uh, my uh, PayPal, Everything is underneath this video, okay? So, she said that she feels like Aquarius have high standards. Now, the person that was talking to me is also Aquarius, so she has high standards too. But she thinks that her partner's standards are impossible, whereas hers are possible. Now, I really can't say on that one. I don't know if she's being biased about that. But I can speak to Aquarius and the high standards. And one of the things I'm going to tell you is, is that as an Aquarius, we, many of us, I'm not going to say we, because some of us don't. Many of us have high standards for ourselves. So I spend all this time working on myself, therapeutic things, spiritual things, mental things, emotional things, physical things. You know, I spend all of this time working on myself, trying to be the best version of myself. And the other Aquarius that do the same thing know exactly what I'm talking about. As far as learning and, you know, music and, you know, uh, how to be, you know, the person I want to be, the best version of myself. So if I want to spend all of this time working on the best version of me, why would I settle for a mediocre version of you? That doesn't make sense to me because it's like if I'm going to do it for myself, then of course I want that to come from you. Now, if it's um, your lover or your child, that's going to be probably where you get a lot of that vibration from. And it's probably going to be difficult in the relationship if you're the other person. But if you're the other person and you're not living up to being your best self, I think that's when you're going to have the biggest problem with it. Because if you're both striving together, growing together, working on yourselves together, you know, doing meditations together, going to workshops together, you know, doing yoga together. If you're both working on yourselves, reading things and discussing it, if you're both working to be the best version of yourself, I don't really think that this would be a problem. If I was to date another Aquarius who was doing this, because my Aquarius wasn't doing this, she wasn't working on the best version of herself. So we didn't have this problem. We basically, the problem I had with her was she wanted me to be like her. <laughs> she wanted me to think like her, do what she would do, you know, and I, and I just wasn't. Even though we were both Aquarius, she was a January Aquarius and we were not the same. She, to me, and this might not be true of every January Aquarius, but to me, 
uh, she wasn't as much fun. <laughs> she wasn't as free spirited as me. And that could be the influence of Saturn. Saturn is the ruling planet in January, you know, is uh, also Capricorn. So it could be a little bit of that influence as well. But she wasn't as fun. So she always wanted me to be more like her, less fun, <laughs> basically. And I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to be less of me, you know, and more of you. So that's why it didn't work out. However, if she had been working on the best version of herself and I had been at the same time, because I always have been, but only in little spurts. One thing about me is I'll work on back then in the old days, I would work on myself here and there. You know what I mean? Like I might do a meditation on Monday and then not do another one for like two weeks. You know, I did it here and there. I might read a, a metaphysical book, for example, and then not read another one, you know, for a while. Back then when I was in my 20s, I would say, my teens and 20s, I wasn't really working on the best version of myself consistently. Sometimes I did and sometimes I totally fucked off, <laughs> you know, and I didn't do it. So uh, uh, during the time that I was in that phase is when I met that Aquarius that I was talking about. So basically you have to be consistent when you're trying to be the best version of yourself. That's what my elders taught me. They're like, I'm like, why isn't this working? And they're like, because you're not doing it consistently. You can't meditate here and there, read something here and there, do something therapeutic once a month and think that you're going to build. It's kind of like going to the gym. If you only go to the gym once a month, it is some benefit, but it's not as much benefit as if you go, for example, three times a week, you know? And that's what my elders were telling me. Like, you're not going enough. <laughs> you're not doing enough. So at that point in my life, I was wishy-washy. She wasn't really doing it at all, <laughs> you know? So we didn't have that vibration. But flip that around to where I'm at now, where I am living up to my standards for myself. So I'm not going to let somebody walk in my door <laughs> that's not doing the same. And they might find that to be harsh. They might find that to be impossible, like she said to me. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> you can walk back out the door then because mind you, I'm fine by myself. You know, and that, and I don't say that to be mean or to be rude, but I just feel like you have to know what you want. And that's what I want. So in this case of, of these two Aquarius, I think she didn't say what the high standards are. So they might be high. They might be, you know, in her opinion, impossible. But I feel like if she's really living up to the best version of herself, if that's not good enough for the other Aquarius, then you have to really look at this relationship. You have to reevaluate this relationship because if you're living up to your absolute best and you're happy with the standard that you're hitting, but your significant other doesn't seem to agree, that could be that could be problematic over time because it could be a it, it could be a self-esteem hit over time that you're, you know, you're doing, you're, you're striving, you're doing your best and your partner is just not impressed. You know, that's problematic. So you're going to have to reevaluate the relationship. Is it you or is it her? Are her standards really impossible or are you just bullshit? <laughs> like, let me know. Okay. Cause I know when it was me, it was times when I swore that I was doing my best and I wasn't. You know, I was wishy-washy. So if you're not wishy-washy, then you have to ask yourself what's going on with her. And then the other question is, is she living up to her standards? Because sometimes when a person isn't, that's when they really focus on you and yours. So if she is or isn't, it's going to change the dynamic as well. So... I think that the bottom line is that you have to really sit and think and evaluate where you are in the relationship. But I have heard this a lot from a lot of people. And I just say, like, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. <laughs> if you have high standards and you're living up to your own, I can't say nothing about it. You know, it is what it is. So let's take a look at some positive comments, okay? 
The first one came from Shamika Solomon. Hey, Shamika. Shamika said, we will definitely play on your psyche. Talking about Aquarius. As a form of revenge. Sometimes they end up just playing themselves out of a good person. And that alone is enough revenge for me. Yeah, some Aquarius do play some serious uh, mind games, some psyche games, you know, some capers, as I would call them. That's very true. That does happen very frequently. Um, I think basically it just depends on your level of maturity because I, the only time in my life I really, really sought revenge is when I was being petty. <laughs> okay, you know, when you're being petty and you seek revenge, yeah. But you don't really have to. That's the one thing I learned about life. You don't have to seek revenge because karma gonna get that ass. <laughs> Trust me. All you gotta do is just fall back and watch it happen. So that's one thing that I learned because I pulled quite a caper and it's just a waste of time. Tomas Chavez. Hey, Tomas. Hey, sweetie. Tomas said, thank you, Queen, for helping me see this in my past life. He's talking about me talking about loving yourself and making other people honor you as well. So I'm glad that you learned that because that's really important. Self-love is really important. And people don't realize that self-love can block you from finding romantic love. Or it can cause you to draw to you people who aren't the best to be around so you got to be really careful with that lesson so it took me a while to get that lesson so i'm glad you got it too all right guys it's time for us to get going so you come back soon because i got a lot more to say see you later